Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. Today we are going to be looking at issue 44 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine. Now for those of you who have been with the channel for a while and have been through the 43 previous episodes of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest with me, um, you will know all about this, but if you are new, um, this is a Partworks magazine from Hatchet Publishing in association with Games Workshop. It comes out once a week and is priced at $7.99. As a subscriber, I get four issues a month in a bundle, and this is the second issue from my current bundle. Usually, the magazine represents really good value because besides the magazine, you get cover products, um, which is usually miniatures, sometimes hobby supplies such as brushes and paints, and usually the value of those cover products is in excess of the $7.99 you pay. So you're getting a discount on the products and you're also getting a little magazine as well. Um, uh, but I say usually because it has happened once before and it is happening again, sometimes the value dips below that $7.99 threshold. And this is one such issue because this issue comes with not one, but two pots of Games Workshop paint. So let's put this aside for a moment and we will talk about this um, and we will talk about why this isn't the greatest thing in the world and then we will move on to why it's not so bad after all really if you think about it. First of all, there are two reasons why uh, getting two pots of paint isn't great. Um, the first reason is obviously the value situation. Um, this pot of paint, this is uh, the Necron Compound Dry Brush Paint, um, is valued at full retail price from Games Workshop at £2.75. This pot of Lead Belcher Base Paint has a retail price of £2.75 from Games Workshop. Combined, by our powers combined, that comes to £5.50, which is actually £2.49 less than the £7.99 that you pay for this particular issue. And that's not great. Um, obviously, the magazine does have a value, and some people might argue that the value of the magazine is, is more than worth that difference between the price of these two pots of paint. However, you have to remember that I've just listed the retail prices, and you might be able to get a discount online and things like that. Furthermore, when they have included paints in the past, um, in previous issues they have included either three pots of paint, um, which you know improves the value somewhat, or it's been two pots of paint and a brush, which again usually pushes you over the $7.99 threshold and makes it um, a little bit of value there. But for some reason, in this particular issue, there is only the two pots of paint, so the value is not so great. That's one of the issues. The second issue is that we have had lead belcher paint before. This is what they call a refill, where they make the assumption that you've got to the point in your subscription where you've probably run out of a particular type of paint, so they give you another one. Now, I've shared my thoughts on the refills in previous videos, so I don't want to go into any great depth here, but basically, um, I understand why they do it, um, it makes sense if they think that you're running out of a particular paint to give you another one. So I do kind of get it, but conversely, I see this magazine as an introduction to the hobby. They give you a type of paint. They show you how you can use that paint and the types of miniatures that that paint is useful for. From that point on, I kind of feel like it's on you when you run out of something to go and get some more of it. Um, it's it's one of those things it's like they've made the assumption for you that you need more um i would rather see a new paint that they can then incorporate into the painting guides um and say and this is what you do with this new type of paint um i don't think they need to hold your hand to the stage where they have to give you refills of stuff it's not that hard once you know that lead belcher exists once you know that you can get it from games workshop or or local retailers or whatever or online you can go and get your own at that point i feel so i i feel like the refills are a wasted opportunity that they could replace with other types of paints or other other products um but that's my personal take on it so yeah i understand why they do it but i don't personally like it 
So there we go. That's my issue with the cover products. Um, but um, anybody who follows my channel knows that I am doing a running total of the value of the magazine in general. Um, and you will know that other magazines do represent incredible value. There's some magazines where you're getting like 60, 70% off retail price on products on the cover. So it's not completely unexpected that there will be one or two issues every now and again where the value is a bit pants. And this is one of those issues. So yeah, taken in isolation, this is not great value, but taken in the scope of the subscription as a whole, um, the, the subscription is fantastic value. And I can understand why every now and again, they might have something like this just to even out um, the, the pricing a little bit so that you, you know, not every issue can give you 20 quids worth of miniatures for 7 99 It's just not going to happen. So I do understand that. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I will put up a running tally of, of all the prices so far because I always do that at the end. But anyway, I think I have talked for far too long about two pots of paint. So let's put those to one side. And let's have a quick look at the magazine itself. Now, normally the magazine has a fluff section, then it has a section on how to build any miniatures you've got, then it has a painting guide, and then it has a mission at the end. Um, obviously, no miniatures with this issue, so there won't be a building section. Um, but we should get some new painting stuff. And that's a good point. Um, the good thing about the cover products here is that this is the first time that they have given us dry paint, uh, the technical paint that's specifically for dry brushing, which means this magazine is going to focus on dry brushing, which is a painting technique that they have only um, touched on ever so briefly in a previous issue. So I've been saying for a while that it's time for them to introduce new concepts in terms of in, in terms of what they're offering in the painting guides. And this issue is another step towards that. So that's going to be a good thing. Um, we have a fluff section. We have stuff about the Adeptus Mechanicus um, because they are covering sort of all aspects of the universe, despite the fact that this is primarily focused on Death Guard and Ultramarines. Um, yeah, so quite a bit on the Adeptus Mechanicus, including, um, look, this is just an amazing miniature, Belisarius Cool. Um, just an absolutely amazing miniature that it's, it's just crazy busy. There's tentacles and, and gribbly bits and mechanical appendages everywhere. Puts Dr. Octopus to shame anyway. Um, more fluff. Chronicles of Ultramar. Uh, more fluff. Plague drones. Um, plague drones with the rot flies, which are basically what the, the plague beasties turn into. They kind of... Um, they, they, they become miserable and despondent and then they get uh, sort of wrapped in a cocoon and then they come out and they're winged beasties. Um, quite a lot on, on those guys. Look at that. Good stuff. Uh, nice painted miniatures. Uh, uh, tons of fluff in this issue and we're still going and we got some stuff on Imperial Fists. Um, I like Imperial Fists. Um, Basically, my introduction to uh, Games Workshop was a, a White Dwarf magazine, which actually had Space Hulk on the cover. Um, but my first game of Games Workshop was Hero Quest, and shortly following Hero Quest, I got Space Crusade, which was my introduction to playing in the 40k universe. And for those of you who don't know, Space Crusade, I'm sure, I'm sure everybody should know this, um, came with um, units of three chapters of Marines. You got um, uh, some Ultramarines, some Blood Angels and Imperial Fists. So those were the, the first three Space Marine chapters that I got to know, and they are my favorite chapters because of that. I am an Ultramarines um, boy, first and foremost, then Blood Angels, then Imperial Fists. Um, despite the fact I always used to pick Blood Angels in Space Crusade because you could give the uh, Sergeant a Power Fist and Power Sword combo, and he could punch through walls. He was amazing. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I digress somewhat. That's the end of that. And we're into using our Necron compounds. So yeah, rather than having a new painting guide for a new product, they've gone back to things that we have previously painted and they have just shown how to do dry brushing. So that's quite useful. Um, talks about obviously putting paint on the brush and then taking most of it back off, flicking it over the, over the details. 
that's useful stuff. Um, dry brushing is a very useful technique, and I use it loads. Um, oh, we're back to our thermic regulators. Obviously, we still can't paint the uh, the plasma cores because we still don't have all the paints we need. But that looks quite nice. Um, and we're going back to previous bits of terrain, which I kind of thought were finished way from from way way back. Um, I did a video. Um, following the painting guide for these and I thought they look quite nice when they're finished but they're going back and adding some more um, some more dry brushing and then because we've now dry brushed our, our uh, thermic regulators um, we're now adding some more details and bits and bobs that we hadn't painted before buttons and stuff they love doing these different colored buttons looks rubbish I don't like that at all um, right celestial gray and lights and things and um, Tidying up the last few details. Well, not the last few details. There's still those ruddy great plasma cores to paint. Um, paint the servo skulls on the side with Rakarth flesh. Allow them to dry and then shade with Agrax Earthshade. When you've done this, you will have finished with your thermic plasma regulators for now. We'll be returning to these models in the future to complete the finishing touches. I wouldn't call painting the main element of the miniature, the actual plasma cores, um, finishing touches. But anyway... Oh, look, they've also gone back to um, to the crates and things and given them an Athonian camo shade wash. And and I, I don't like that as much. I think they ruined those with that wash. Um, they had a nice clean finish before. And um, yeah, I don't think they've done 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 a, a good job of that. Um, that. That doesn't look as good to me. But anyway, that's the painting out of the way. And then we're on to ooh, armoured containers. In previous issues, we provided you with plastic terrain kits. Yeah, you did. Um, we're now giving you new rules to replace the old rules that you've used in the tutorial missions. Cool. So we're getting, um, I guess, the fully fledged rules for using the armored crates. We've got the rules for the storm bolters now that you can put on the top. Um, and covering bonuses. Um, the containers do not provide any cover for models standing on or hiding behind them, but they block line of sight. Fair dues. Um, and then rules on line of sight and stuff. Cool. That's good. Um, and then taking the tech dumps. Loads of puerile jokes just um, flooded my brain for a moment there. So um, anyway. Yeah. So we're going back. Oh, look, that page is coming off. Um, yeah, we're going to a new scenario where we are putting the crates out on the board and using them as objectives for, um, yeah, grab and hold missions. Um, again, as in the last issue, they've pushed two boards together to make a massive battlefield. And it's just enemy forces coming in from either side of the table, um, getting victory points for holding the objectives, which are the ammo crates, uh, at the end of five battle rounds by the looks of it. Um, Fair enough. And that's that. Um, there's loads of fluff in there. Lots of fluff. Um, if you if you like your fluff, this is a good issue for that. Um, and yeah, they go back and cover some stuff and, and they, they uh, the, with the painting guides, with new adding new paints to the things that we've previously painted. And, um, and yeah, it covers dry brushing. So it's a mixed bag, really. Um, I, I'm... I'm not convinced on this particular issue, but there is some good stuff in there. Let's have a little look at what's coming up next, because I've talked for far too long. Next, we have, in issue 45, the Space Marine Scouts. And when I cover that issue, I will promise to do my very best to be as upbeat as possible. But oh, we hate sit -bagginses. Um, Really not a fan of the Space Marine Scouts at all. And then we have issue 46, when we are getting a whole heck of a heap of stuff. This is actually going to be one frame from the Dark Imperium or No No Fear starter set. Um, both of those starter sets have this frame, which has one of the bloated drone thingies, um, a Lord of Contagion, and four Death Guard Marines. That's a lot of stuff. Um, and it's very easy to get excited about the potential value there. It looks like a lot of value. But when you consider it's one frame from a set um, that you can buy for £50, 
um, and that set actually has four other frames besides this one. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not as valuable as they first appear, but obviously we will talk about that in a later video. For now, as I promised earlier on, way back in the mists of time, I'm going to put up the um, the running totals here, which is basically the cost of subscribing to the magazine versus the cost of purchasing all of the cover products of this magazine at full retail value. So I'm not taking into account online discounts, and I'm not taking into account the value of the magazine itself. It's um, just a product comparison, which hopefully some people will find useful. But that is it for now. I do apologize for talking for quite a long time about two pots of paint, but anybody who has subscribed to the channel uh, for any length of time will know that I have a tendency to not shut up as I am continuing to do right now. Please leave your comments and queries below and I'm going to go. Bye everyone. Bye bye.